Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is CJ, and he just told me that I need to get to work on a scrambler because it's been three weeks. What do you think? Willie says the same thing too. So let's go outside. We'll go ahead and uh, I got to do the exhaust on the scrambler. We're still waiting on parts from different manufacturers. And um, yeah, it's been a big delay since I've been back from Moab. So we're going to get busy. See you out there. All right, hey guys, I am not a professional welder, so don't judge, but I'm doing it myself. So I've got to fix this exhaust in order to put a muffler on it. So most of you guys know I've done, swapped the four liter from a 2001 Cherokee into my scrambler. So we got to get the exhaust angled just right so I can put a muffler on it and put a tailpipe on it. Uh, I don't want to pay $700 to somebody to do the exhaust work so we're going to do that today and then i'm going to show you a few more things that i've got planned for the scrambler stay tuned all right so here's today's project if you notice i've got the catalytic converters all on the number two oxygen sensors aren't used in this setup so when chris made my harness uh, we deleted um, the downstream O2 sensors because they're not needed to make the engine run or for emissions because this doesn't have emissions anymore. So if you can see the flange, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the flange kind of points down at like a 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to have to do, so I'm going to have to come in here and cut this tube and cut this tube and then try and section it up. So that flange will point back straight through the cross member. Can you see that? All right, so now we gotta unbolt the flanges and pull this and catalytic converters and everything out and then get to cutting and welding. Let's wiggle it and see if it'll come out. Ah, oh, boy, see what's stuck in there. Okay, stay. All right, you can see I got it out. You can see where I've cut this already once and welded it up for a, just a short little dump off of the exhaust here. Let's see, this is the angle where it bolts to the engine. I mean, you can see the flange is off, not quite 45. So I'm thinking cutting the flange here and turning it up or shortening this tube and cutting this tube to angle it and weld it back up. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and try cutting those other tubes. Cutting maybe like a quarter of an inch at a time out of it. And then bolting the Kelly converters to the, uh, to the engine manifold. And see if I can match it up. But I'm going to get those old oxygen sensors out of it. Hey Ben, I'm wearing my Crocs. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe it came out of there. Okay, never mind the mess. Check it out. These guys came out no problem. Most of you guys know that the oxygen sensors on the downstream on the old Cherokees and stuff, we usually don't like to come out. But I put a 7 8 wrench on them, boom, popped right out. That's got to be a first for that. So, okay, we got those out. Let me go find those plugs, these plugs that go in here. And then we'll get those plugged up and then we'll get to cutting. All right, so these are oxygen sensor bung hole plugs. <laughs> 
So these take the place of the oxygen sensor. I screwed it. Let's see if eight fits on. Hey, what do you know? Eight millimeter. All right, so we got the center uh, bung plugs in. <laughs> bung plugs. So we eliminated the downstream oxygen sensors because they're not needed because the cats are not monitored. All right, so now we got to make a cut here and here. And then what I plan on doing is bolting these back up and then judging about how much I need to cut out of this. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, now that I've got that cut off of it, I'm going to offer this up and see how much I really need to cut out of it. So let's get this thing mocked up in place and see what it's going to take to get it straight. All right, so now you can see what we're dealing with. See how that's kind of at an angle. I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to take a section out of this pipe right there and a section out right here. I'm going to go ahead and cut that flange off too. I've got a piece of pipe that I think will fit that just perfect once I get it straight. What do you guys think? All right, so the lines represent straight line marks on the exhaust. This is the way the exhaust angles down now and comes out. I need it to come out at this line up above. I'm going to cut this flange off first and see if I can tilt it. But I still need to take half inch out here and a half inch out here if I'm successful in getting that flange to pull a, what is that, 45 degrees? Almost 45 degrees. So I'm going to get to cutting that guy and then we'll try and weld it back up. see that didn't really worked out as planned so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and cut this guy at a 45 and then then I'm gonna take this guy that I had sitting around try and weld it in a fashion like that Maybe I can do that right there looks like a pretty good gap I can just cut this flush and then, then mount this guy in here and then that way I have an expanded outer diameter to go on a muffler. Huh. Alright, so I just mocked this up in place. It looks like if I take an inch out here and an inch out here, this will be straight enough to where I can put this piece of pipe inside of it. Maybe smash it a little bit and then weld it all up. So this will be straight, straight enough. It won't be too much of an angle for the exhaust coming out.
Maybe. Nope. I still can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> All I'm gonna do is tack it. Ready? All right, so we got them in there. They're sort of tightened up. It looks like I've got the angle of the flange where I want it so I can weld that other pipe in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack that other pipe in it, pull it all back out again, and then weld it up. So this has been fun. <laughs> so bear with me. All right guys, so after a bunch of time and crappy welds, she's all put together. I got to thinking, man, once I get this in there and I go to put the muffler in, that's going to be a pain to put the muffler clamp on there. But it is what it is, I guess. So, my little Hobart welder is hanging in there and it's about six years old now. All right, guys, there it is. I just fired it up. And it's got one little pinhole in it that I need to fix. But other than that, it's perfect. I can run an exhaust on it now. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I didn't trash the cats, didn't trash the pipes. Um, I just found out, figured out my welder is out of gas. That's why it was giving me so much trouble. But it must have had some gas in it right up to that point or something. But anyway, it's on there. I'll finish welding it up later. It's good enough to put a muffler on it and then I'll pull it back off, wrap it, finish welding it and be done. So that's the exhaust. Didn't think I was gonna let you guys go without hearing it. Okay guys, the exhaust is on. So that eliminates that part of it for me. I'm gonna go get a probably a cheap turbo muffler. Um, this thing's gonna get banged up. I don't wanna rip a Flowmaster $150 muffler off of the back of this thing. I'll get a cheap tailpipe and put that on here. But she's a runner. So we got the exhaust done. Let me show you a few other things that I've got planned for the Scrambler. I don't think you guys have seen it yet. All right, guys, so we're done with the exhaust. I'm happy with that. I gotta take it back off, do a little bit of welding and grinding on it. Um, but I wanted to show you something special that I saw and experienced in, while I was in Moab. All right, so this is a case from Mob Armor. It holds the iPad, and as you can see, it's got all the gauges on it. So I'm gonna run this on the dash of the Scrambler. Um, you got your engine temp, mass airflow i mean you can change your configurations i'm just going to have oil pressure water temperature and speedometer and uh, you know all your pertinence that you need so let me show you how i'm going to mount it all right so as you can see i've already started to delete the gauges in the dash i'm not going to delete all the controls i'm going to keep those so i'm just going to make a panel that covers all of that and i've got the key on i <laughs> got the key on <laughs> so I'm going to mount that uh, panel there and then this is going to mount to the panel so I can angle this in any way I really need to alright so it's at the, at the driver and then I've got full range of motion on this thing so I can show it to my passengers I can show it to myself I think it's going to be really neat alright so We've got the iPad all mounted on in the new Mob Armor bracket um, that's going to be mounted to the dash. The one thing I wanted to show you is the Onyx uh, map system. So here we've got a popular trail here that's local to us. It's Flagpole Trail. Um, 
You can see topographical lines and the trail itself. Pretty simple to read and follow. I really uh, am anxious to use this here. We used it in Moab in Chris's Jeep and um, it was pretty flawless while we were off road. The one thing I like about it too is that you can see personal property boundary lines. So you're not gonna accidentally get on someone's pr uh, private property um, unless you have access or so forth. So I'm really anxious to use this as, for the topographical functionality and also on my gauges on the dash. So I think it's gonna be a real added benefit for the Jeep. Um, we'll see how it works. This thing's gonna bounce around a lot and get dusty and stuff. And you know, I didn't throw my old gauges away, so I could always change it out. All right, so here's Chris, uh, Trail Jeep. I was with him in Moab. Let's take a look at his system and see how his system works. Uh, it's very similar to what I'm gonna be running. Here's all the rundown of my first generation iPad Pro in a mob armor case. Uh, it's mounted through the dash down to the firewall. Uh, it's pretty darn solid. Um, I use it as a supplement to my auto meter um, stack cluster, which gives me my basic readouts. But this gives me a little bit more. I also use it for Onyx Off-Road, which I just recently started using, but Onyx offers a really nice community, um, and they have a lot of um, maps preloaded or routes preloaded. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, actually, I used Onyx for the treasure hunt for Baja Designs, the Christmas treasure hunt. You can see they've got all these in there already. Um, pretty good for mapping. The last feature that I really use it for, there's two more features. One is, I use it for Spotify because you need music and it's easier than pulling my phone out. But more important than that is, it is also my speedometer. Uh, this is a free app called Speed Tracker. Uh, I use it as a supplement to this dash, which also has a GPS speedometer in it. This one allows me to have my speed and a little mini map or a bigger map. Um, you know, it's just nice to have. Other than that, I do get messages on here. You can see I've got nine iMessages. Um, if I'm out with friends, I can use find my friends to you know, share my location with others. Generally, I love just having an iPad in here. Um, it's just a good piece of equipment for mapping, um, for messaging, and for music in my Jeep. I also use it for Google Maps, um, quite literally, just to get around, which is just incredibly handy. You know, it's got all my recent searches in it, all my favorite places. And for a lot of trails in Moab, they actually are shown as county roads. So I'm able to use Google Maps to get out of places that I don't have a uh, map for. CJ in there barking. But uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. And if you have any questions about the, the new system that's going in the Jeep, uh, shoot me a, um, a question down below. And uh, appreciate you watching. Have a good one.